Hello and welcome back to AIVC YouTube channel. We're here to bring you news on all blockchain and crypto. And today we're discussing the regulation and technology at work here in the Philippines. And joining me here to discuss this, we have Emmanuel Sampson, CEO at Imperia Group, and Secretary Chelly Ponce, the lead director at Imperia Group. They do all blockchain developments and also they're partners with AFAB, the blockchain and fintech authority in the Philippines. And further, we will see them exhibit with us at Sigma Manila and AIBC Manila at 2021. Gentlemen, it is great to have you both here. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. How are you doing? I'm great. Uh, you're very welcome. Um, Emmanuel, I want to start with you and get your perspective on how do you see the role of blockchain playing for the online gaming, um, in, for the online gaming industry in a short term perspective, let's say two years versus beyond? Okay. Uh, short term, actually, they're playing an integral role already. You know, um, as far as blockchain in general, you have the big brands such as IBM with Hyperledger, Citigroup, uh, JP Morgan that are already joining in. Now, you know, as the internet was a game changer for the gambling industry in general, so will blockchain be a game changer. You know, you've got uh, the, I guess the technology that's already in its teen years, you know, coming up to 12, 13 years. But in the short term, you know, the, the Online casino is already offering crypto-only gaming betting, blockchain-based getting uh, betting, decentralized, you know, provable fair gaming. So in the short term, there's already uh, <coughs> proof that the blockchain, as far as uh, technology, uh, is making a, a mainstay. For above and beyond, let's say after two years, the regulators need to embrace it. You know, they need to find a way to work with the technology. Um, so rather than <clears throat> The technology being a hindrance, for example, uh, we believe, I believe too, that technology can be leveraged, in this case, blockchain. So with regulators, they need to embrace it and with blockchain as a, a viable solution, since the main problem it's solving is really transparency, right, at the end of the day. So with the regulators uh, accepting this and embracing it, I believe the whole ecosystem of the online gaming industry is going to be uh, far better. So I believe that's what's going to happen in the next couple of years. Awesome. Um, how about you, Secretary Chelly? Will PAGOR, the Philippine gaming, um, gaming regulatory body here in the Philippines, uh, embrace this technology given that some industries such as banking are clearly not supporting it yet? Well, yeah, yeah. but uh, right now, uh, the, the uh, PAGOR has to adapt this or else it's going to be that up. Well, there are many jurisdictions now that are adopting this kind of a technology. And uh, in, in the Philippines, uh, actually the banking is not really against it, but they're now trying to, to study it on how it's going to be implemented here in the Philippines. Uh, the, the Banco Central of the, of the Philippines, or the Central Bank of the Philippines, came up with several uh, circulars pertaining to the regulation of cryptocurrency, and of course, and even the FinTech and blockchain. Even, even other, other agencies like the Security Exchange Commission, they have also established some regulations on how to do this. Just recently, the, uh, the legislative body, both Congress and Senate, are now studying, uh, and they have already drafted a bill to uh, push for a digital banking. And hopefully by next year, you will be having five licenses for digital banking. So they are now being, you know, they, they know now the advantages of using this kind of a technology considering the present situation right now. So they know that this is very important. And if they don't do that, they're going to be left out. So they have to adapt this, uh, this, this technology in order to, to be in, in the industry and be able to compete with other jurisdictions. Exactly. Um, it is the law of evolution. And um, how about you, Emmanuel? How about for online gaming, other than payments and RNG creation? Where do you see the technology playing the most important role? Um, well, as I mentioned earlier, I know with provable fairness on the blockchain, and mm -hmm. the, the main problem that blockchain is solving is transparency. So I think the, the, an important role and the major role that blockchain will play is really in the regulatory frame, specifically mm -hmm. with auditing and reporting. So you can take now um, you know, important data recorded on the blockchain, and this data is easily available for the regulators. So I think that's gonna play a huge important role uh, as far as regulation goes. And blockchain you know, is a 
definitely uh, the right solution for them. And Emmanuel, where does the Philippines rank for the use of um, the technology in Asia? Oh, uh, as far as in Asia, Philippines definitely mm -hmm. ranks, uh, ranks uh, in the top, um, especially with the introduction of uh, the blockchain law within the AFAB, which is RA11453. You know, uh, the BSP embraced it with, you know, fee circulars surrounding cryptocurrency. You know, they introduced it, you know, BSP introduced recently the digital para, and now they have the digital payment facility that they're doing. So I believe, you know, as far as Philippines, they're really embracing the technology um, and they're doing a great job at it. Okay. Um, Secretary Chelly, I wanted to turn back to you and um, ask you, does the Philippines have the proper education and infrastructure in place to see the proper growth? Um, are there enough workers with experience to take this to the next level? I think so. Uh, there's a lot of Filipinos now that are engaged in this uh, kind of the technology. As a matter of fact, uh, with these new uh, initiatives by the oversight agencies, there is really enthusiasm on Filipinos to engage in this kind of a, uh, uh, in this kind in the industry. In the case of infrastructure, and I think this is where we have to do a lot of things. This is the reason why we have uh, asked for a tel third telco to be able to provide us the infrastructure uh, system, no? Because right now, uh, well, about, uh, based on all evaluation, the Philippines may have this infrastructure, but in terms of uh, fee, the, the rates, and other requirements, uh, we might not be competitive to other countries. But with the introduction of the new, te uh, new telco, we might be able to improve our uh, uh, IT system and back with a well-equipped uh, IT employees. Uh, actually, we're number two, uh, compared, uh, uh, we're number two to India. Uh, India has the number of IT supply uh, or expertise, and the Philippines is number two in this, no? And uh, we're still, with the regulations in place, I think the confidence now of these employees to work with this kind of a technology would be a tremendous boost on, on their part including the technology or the infrastructure itself. Brilliant. Um, now, what are the largest challenges for proper regulation, Secretary Chelly? Well, to tell you frankly, as a former regulator, mm -hmm. you, you know, the basic uh, for you to be able to set up a, uh, a regulation or a, 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 a jurisdiction for a gaming and issue of the license, all these things, you have to consider several uh, uh, factors, no? Number one would be, what is the legal basis of that regulator? In other words, does the regulator have the legal mandate to issue such uh, technology, uh, not to issue gaming, to e uh, issue to regulate uh, blockchain, fintech, cryptocurrency, and all of these things. Uh, so that should have to be in place. Uh, that's the reason why what we did with Alpha, it was to, to introduce this, so that we have to have a the stability of the, of the jurisdiction. And at the same time, the sustainability. Because if your foundation, which is the legal mandate, is not in place, after one or two years, then you're out. They will question your, your uh, oh, why are you operating with all of these things and not, not in place. So again, that basically will destroy the image of the industry. So that is the first thing that you should do. to, to put in place the, what are the basic or the legal, legal basis in order to operate a uh, jurisdiction or a, a regulator. Second would be if you have to have a internal rules in place mm -hmm. that is already very clear. Internal rules should consider other things aside from the legal issues. It should also address like taxation. It should also address the relationship of the local government unit and the national government pertaining to taxation and, you know, and uh, the employment. Uh, what are the things that you have to consider? All of these things has to be in place in internal rules so that once the investor comes in, everything is in improper places. It, has, it doesn't have to, you know, it's very hard to change the rules after you have already, you have already operated and here comes, you change the rules. That basically discourages the operator. So I think what is a good thing, and this is a lesson learned, 
that a regulator should in, put in place a proper uh, roadmap for an investor to follow in order to be able to implement this kind of a business. Fantastic. <laughs> well, lastly, um, question for the both of you. Where do you see the online gaming industry here in the Philippines post-COVID-19? Emmanuel, let's start with you. Oh, well, yeah, post-COVID, that's uh, so easily yeah. the topic of the question these days. So, it is. So, but, <laughs> Very famous, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, there's always good news and bad news of everything, right? But I think there's a balance. So, I mean, the good news is the mass market is now accepting and more aware of online commerce in general, right? Mm -hmm. So, which really includes <coughs> online gaming because there's, there's players that are out there that have been going to casinos and, you know, they do have limited operations that they open. Um, and because of COVID, you know, these players uh, are now looking for ways of entertainment. And naturally, the evolution will be on, online. So I believe due to the influx, you know, the regulators must be more proactive now because mm -hmm. people are going to be online more, they're going to play more. And, we, you know, with that said, I believe with the regulators being a, playing a proactive role, accepting technology such as blockchain, DLT, and integrating it, it's a good way for them to also, you know, uh, have an overview of what's really happening in the market you know, in mm -hmm. this COVID age, right? Actually, mm -hmm. just yeah. last month, KPMG um, wrote a paper, and uh, the paper was uh, the impact on digital global currencies. And so, you know, we're, we're starting on, on the right track now. And, you know, the, re the reality is uh, post-COVID will be here for a long time. Mm -hmm. And, you it know, is. both players and the online operators have to make sure that that ecosystem that they're a part of, you know, is a win-win for all. You know, with the regulators uh, participating in that, I think it's going to be a, a good thing. That is such a great insight, Emmanuel. How about for you, Secretary Chelly? Well, uh, the because of the pandemic, I, I think they now see the difference or the advantage of a uh, online gaming and a, a land-based operation, because the real the, the, the one that uh, well. Or in online, uh, because of the pandemic, more players would like to to use the online uh, platform rather than going to because of the restrictions, the health protocols uh, required in a land-based operation. Uh, not only that, there are some restrictions also issued by uh, mainland China to to limit the or to limit or to defer of people going to other places, no, especially in the Philippines to go as a, as a tourist. So this basically affects the land-based operation. Uh, of course, the online gaming uh, has the advantage of this. But the problem with online gaming is the perception of different countries because it, it is still in the gray area. You know, it, it's not yet fully acceptable. And in major countries like, for example, China and many, many other countries here in, in Asia, it's only the Philippines that's really open uh, mm -hmm. to this. You know? It has a... There are a few regulations, uh, there are legal mandates, uh, but if you go to other countries, they're not that stable as like the Philippines that it has a legal basis. So the problem now is really how to, to, to adapt an online gaming. You should have take advantage of this situation. But it, it was also affected uh, on, the, on the operation because, uh, well, it becomes now uh, the, the relationship because it's not accepted to other countries both online and online that get affected this epidemic, the, the, uh, the situation should be a reverse. Whether if the online, if the land base is affected by this, uh, by this uh, crisis, of course, the online gaming has advantage. But because of that uh, restriction, then you have a problem. The only solution that I think is that if the land base and the online gaming will work together, not to as a competitor, because in many cases, uh, in my own experience, la online gaming and land-based are, they seem that these are competitors. Uh, especially in the US, uh, they have a lot of states there that they don't want online gaming because they say that online gaming is a competitor of uh, land-based operation. Mm -hmm. in, in Europe, there are some adjustments already. They have uh, tried to adapt the click and brick strategy, uh, combining uh, uh, land-based and uh, casino mm -hmm. as, a, as a platform so that at least they can they can the land base can expand their market uh, using the online gaming 
and using the platform, the, the casino operation as their main platform. So this is working. And I think that should also be accepted here in Asia, that they are not competitors. The online gaming enhances the income. It is the income or the reach of the land-based operation. So there should be a, a good relationship between the two. And the introduction of a blockchain is very important, especially for a regulator. Because the, the very component of a blockchain is the traceability, the transparency. Of course, these are very basic requirements for a regulator to be able to monitor all the income, all the transaction, you know, on its part. And at the same time, if that would be the case using the blockchain, because of this characteristic of a blockchain, you give confidence to uh, players because they don't they don't see that this is not a, a rig or something, no? Because it's in the blockchain. And I think most operators should adapt. They, they should adapt. Operators should adapt this as part of it because sometimes they they some uh, operators. Would, 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 would think that blockchain is only good for cryptocurrency yeah. and, and other, uh, you, you know. But no, blockchain can be used as a system that will, uh, uh, to give integrity to the games that you are, op that you are uh, operating. Right. And also, in the, in the regulator, you are now confident that this operator is not, uh, you know, doing some things, other things. So that basically would protect everyone. Right now in the U.S., they use blockchain. They're proposing actually this. There is a bill in the in, uh, in the space, especially in Nevada, to use blockchain for good governance. So, in other words, how if you put that to a game and you you transform the gaming into a negative something and to a, a little bit a positive, no? So, so you 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 now try to change the picture of the gaming by introducing the blockchain. That Technology. I think and that's why one of our advocacies really is uh, regulation and technology at work. So I think okay, you know, it can work hand in hand. Yeah. Live Fantastic. in harmony. Fantastic. Well, Emmanuel, Secretary Chelly, thank you so much for talking to me today and for throwing a light on this topic. I really enjoyed our discussion and we'd love to do this again in the future. And I really appreciate you both for your time. Thank you also. For thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Great job, by the way. Well, we hope you enjoyed this segment, and if you do have questions you would like to be answered, share your thoughts in the comment box below.